This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. The Torah is telling us that the faith in Hashem is located in the nights. And everyone knows that when you're walking at night, so it's harder for you to see. So the faith that been compared to the moon is receiving all of its light from the sun, from the shining sun. And that's the nature of the believer, that he knows that he himself is a vessel to contain light from a higher source, from the divine source, through his soul from the Creator himself. He is not a pillar of light, he is not a spring of knowledge, he is receiving and transferring, sharing, giving out from what that he received. But in reality he is not the source for all that good, just he counts on the light to keep on coming from the higher source that it's Hashem, that it's the Creator of the world. And that's why the person that is a believer, he is compared to the moon, Levana Yareach. And the moon is shining for us the nights. And when the moon is shining the nights, he is shining the nights in a light that is not illuminating as the day for us. It's not the same brightest light like we have in the days. It's a weaker light. It's a light that is exactly enough for us to handle in the darkness. That's the amount that we're receiving through the moon for us to handle with, to hold on, to survive. It's not enough to run our lives at night. It's not comfortable as the day. And also you cannot say it's impossible to function because a normal person can see even in the nights. So the faith is a gift that been given to us because without that gift we wouldn't be able to cross our night aspects in our lives the challenges, the doubts, the difficulties, but it's also still not as bright as the day. What is the day? The day is the knowledge, is the power of understanding. Now, every person in the world that is walking in that path of faith, he wants to be a believer, he wants to serve Hashem, So by searching for faith and looking for faith, he's basically decreeing on himself to walk at nights. Because the faith is in the nights. And if you are Mevakesh Amana, you're seeking to believe in Hashem. So you're basically asking from Hashem to show you His existence, His power in those places that it's hard to recognize Him in those places. In the hard hours when people are losing their connection to the Creator, those are the hours that you're asking and seeking for faith to come back and to illuminate your eyes, at least in an amount that will give you the power to hold on and to survive. And for an example, a situation that, that can take place in the life of a person that will explain what that we are discussing today. If let's say a person has a lot of money, so he saw wonders and miracles while making those amounts of money, and now he is very thankful to the Creator, and he can go and believe that he received that gift from heaven. But if that person will find himself in a dark place, and in that dark place he's keep on asking for salvations, but they stopped from coming, 
and suddenly he finds himself without the ability and the wealth that he had before to buy whatever he needs and to, to take care of all of his, to cover all of his expenses. So then in that moment he feels lost and he's in darkness. Now he is asking to seek for faith, to ask for faith. Some salvation will come to him, but that salvation won't be illuminating like the day. It will be enough for him to pay his rent. It will be enough for him to buy a ticket, to pay his bills, to make shoppings, to do whatever he needs to, to survive, to hold on. And that's the difficulty of those people that are searching for faith. And those people that are searching for faith are for sure searching and asking for the highest thing, for the most important thing in the world. You cannot say that this thing is a medium thing. So why is it so great to seek for faith if faith is in the nights and the destiny of faith is to be at nights? Because in the future to come, when the real salvation will take place in our lives, and it's in the life of every individual, then Laila Kayom Ya'ir, the night will illuminate like the brightest day. Suddenly, the night will be a place that the light is shining in, and it will be even brighter than the day because of the darkness that was over there one moment ago will still be in the back of our minds, in our memory. We're going to remember how we've been in Egypt, how we've been in the dark place, and now we had a salvation. And that complete salvation will come out of the darkness, and then it will be so blessed and, and, and so important and, and great and satisfying, much more than a light during the day. The, try to illuminate to sh to light on a candle in in the in the noon time you the the candle is useless for you you walk with that candle it doesn't help you because the source of light that is the sun is so bright and so powerful and strong that is turning off the effect is nullifying canceling the illumination of that tiny candle so a candle in the daytime is useless but at night, it's very powerful. It's an amazing tool. So, when we are seeking for the light at the daytime, it's useless. You don't need to turn on the light in the day. You need to turn on the light at night. And when the light is coming in the hardest hours, so then you're enjoying and you're receiving so much satisfaction, much more than you had if you would receive that salvation in the day. And that's the reward that is waiting for those ones that are walking with an innocent heart, with a simple heart to look and to seek for faith. Because those people are not asking much. They're really asking only for their needs. And if they will know that they will be able to cover their expenses and to cross their life peacefully and calmly and like in a balanced way, they would be happy enough. We're not talking about people with huge appetite that wants to swallow the world and to become billionaires or whatever. We're talking about simple people that are seeking for saddle mind, for a little bit of peace and quiet, that they're willing to give from what that they have. They're willing to support and to, and to give a hand and, and, and to back up those ones that are in a similar condition or that they feel related to and they feel like helping them. They, the reward of those people that are the seekers of faith is the reward that is promised to the righteous ones in the future to come. And Hashem, the creator of the world, when He wanted to create the world and when He wanted to give from his good to his creations so he was thinking to himself what will be the biggest the greatest thing of them all that i will give to my creations to my souls that i'm sending on that mission and his decision was while searching for the best thing in the world to give 
was to give himself, to hand himself over to his people. Because a billionaire that will give you one million dollars, so okay, he gave you, it's amazing, but it's one million dollars. If he will give you one hundred million dollars, if he's a billionaire, so like, even one hundred million dollars for him is like, it's not all of his treasures, he's a billionaire. A person that is a genius, even if he will sit with you and will teach you for days, for months, for years, if he is a real genius, he has so much more knowledge to give over and he cannot even give all of his knowledge all in, in his lifetime. And a person for sure don't have the vessels to contain all of his knowledge in a lifetime. And this is why the gift of the faith seekers is an eternal gift to become one with the Creator Himself. He is not giving you something. He will not reward you on your good actions. He will bless you with the blessing of becoming one with Him. And that's the faith. The meaning of being a believer is to live your life with Hashem. It's to live every moment of your life with Hashem. Throwing yourself on the Creator. And always waiting and hoping for the salvation. And even one moment before the time, your due day, the time that you need to pay, the time that you need to achieve something, you will still wait calmly and happily, trusting the Creator. And that's the way that you live your eternal life with the Creator. And the Creator will open your eyes to see how that all your journey was not really a journey in the darkness, just that He was the light that was shining through those curtains. For us right now, the world looks dark. For us right now, it looks like there's so many shades and so many blockings and so many obstacles and so many difficulties. But the salvation and the real complete redemption already took place in the divine world, in the world to come. Maybe we cannot see that yet because it takes time for the light to come. It takes time for the salvation to take place. But in reality, it already happened because in the real world, in the world of above, in the world to come, in the world of truth, there are no limitations. There are no places. There are no zones, no areas. There are no weights and times, no constrictions at all. There is only the truth of Hashem. Now if Hashem decided to redeem His people and to bring complete redemption, that redemption already took place. Because it's written on Hashem and the verses are telling us the truth of the nature of the creation. That the Creator said, Amar Vayehi. When He said something, that thing took place immediately. When He said that something will happen, that thing took place. Now there are things that already took place in the physical world under the limitation of time. And there are things that are about to come. But there is no real difference between those two in the world of truth, except of in our eyes. Only in our eyes that we're not able to see above the limitation of time because we are under that limitation. We are constricted in that way. The time is affecting our life. So we think to ourselves that the salvation is about to come, is supposed to come. But those people that went at darkness, they saw a huge light. While they were walking in the darkness, they were able to experience something that a person that is walking at the daytime, that his life are a life of success, of prosperity, of wealth and happiness and joy, he will never experience. He will never experience the presence of Hashem. He won't be able to recognize the godliness in the way that a person that is walking in the darkness can recognize. Like the candle in the day. 
A candle in the daylight is useless, but at night you can appreciate its light. You can understand its greatness and its importance. And you're holding it and it's precious to you because you feel how useful it is, how helpful it is, how much grace and blessing he contains. And you're holding it and you are full with gratitude and appreciation because you see the benefit that comes out of it. You see its real nature. And its real nature, it's not something that you can recognize when you're succeeding, when you're happy, when everything is fantastic, when all the salvations are coming in the day of redemption. And that is the reward of those ones that are walking in darkness. That when they are walking in darkness, while hoping and asking and seeking for a salvation for the Creator to reveal His loving face, His endless love, His unconditional love, when He is doing it, even if He's doing it in measured amounts, even if He's giving only a bit, only enough for you to pay your bills, only enough for you to cover your expenses, only enough for you to hold on and to survive, still you have just been given with the opportunity to sense the loving kindness of the Creator on you. You can appreciate that gift. You can sense the greatness of following Him in that life of, cha cha of, of challenges, even in hard hours. Now, the issue is that people are falling to that forgetfulness of, of remembering that our life is a life of a mission. People are, are hoping and, 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 and asking for physical salvations and they want to be answered already and by doing that by going with that desire to be answered and to be saved already they're losing touch with the real purpose of life the real purpose of life in this world is not to come to that completion is not to achieve that prosperity and that reward to the world to come. That's the purpose of the world to come. To enjoy on Hashem, to spend time with the Creator, to see in this world the mission is not to enjoy. I'm not saying don't be happy. In this world the mission is not to be pleasured and to be satisfied. And I'm not saying that you don't need to be satisfied and happy. But the purpose in this world is to recognize the good out of the bad, out of the darkness. It's the faith, it's the wisdom, it's good qualities in other people, it's the light of your own soul that is shining from within, it's many, many things. It's your right location for your house. It's the right shiduch to know who to get married with. It's the right approach, how to, it's, it's, it's an approach to life. To recognize the good from the bad. You have millions of options of, of professions for you to work. You can be a lawyer, you can be a doctor, you can be a builder, you can be a mechanic. You can, you can choose. Like you have billions of opportunities. You can, in this neighborhood, in that area, in that state, in that land, in that, like you... So many options are open for you in this language, in that language, from your house, outside, in an office, in buildings, in front of the sea, in the woods, like millions of options. But you need to find that one that is good for you. All of them are offered, but you need to find the one that belongs to you. The one that when you will work in that job, you'll feel satisfied. You will know that you're doing the right thing. That you will have a purpose in your life. Women, you want to get married. Millions of women. Just choose. Cannot choose. You should know who you're looking for. You should look for that one that belongs to you. Students of mine that are asking me about how to find my shidu, how to find my soulmate, a man or a woman. I'm telling them, you don't need to go and look outside. You will never find the answer while following your eyes and searching for the right one for you. First of all, you need to know what you're looking for. And what you're looking for, you're looking for beauty, you're looking for wealth, you're looking for talents, you're looking for sense of humor. You don't look for those things. 
She can be the funniest person in the world and she will make fun of you, like for the rest of your life. She can be the richest person in the world and, and she can destroy you with her money. Like it, money is not the salvation. Beauty is not the salvation. Sense of humor, whatever, intelligence, all those things are, are nothing in reality. They're not really the answers for your question. Your question is, who is my soulmate? Who is the one that will fit to my soul? Who is that one that I will feel comfortable sharing and talking with? And I will also enjoy hearing and listening and I'll be able to be a vessel for her as well. Who is that one that fit to me? So how you will recognize her as long as you don't know who you are? You want to find your soulmate? You need to find yourself. You cannot really find your soulmate as long as you haven't found yourself. And even if the Creator made that wonder for you, and you got married, and you believe that she is your soulmate, all your work together is to learn who you really are, is to learn how to live together, how to speak, how to enjoy, how to spend time together, how to know each other, how to give respect and time and place to each other, to have the ability to communicate and to transfer information and emotions. And without that there is no peace, there is no salvation, there is no shalom in the house. So what's the purpose of a relationship like that? When you want to achieve something in your life, you need to connect yourself to the true mission, to find the good inside of it. The way to do it is to be honest and to be truthful. We must understand that no matter how high and inspiring and divine the purpose looks like, oh, it's so godly, it's so amazing, so fantastic, the way to reach it must be simple. It must be simple. There's no way in the world that the path for salvation will be complex and hard. There's no way in the world the Creator wouldn't do that to us. Because He knows our inclinations, He knows our weaknesses, He knows how hard it is for us to survive and to hold on in this world. And He knows that from one generation to the next we're losing power, we're losing happiness, we're losing satisfaction, we're losing hope, we're falling into depths that never been known before. Drugs that are coming to the world and poisons that are coming to the world and ways of communication and, 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 and television and movies and, and horrific things that are happening online. Things that never happened before. Violence that never happened before. Things that are horrific and happening inside houses, inside families. Things that are scary. The Creator, He knew all those things. So you cannot expect, if you know all those things from your children that are going to lower places, to be wiser in the end, to be greater in the end, to be stronger in the end. You cannot expect a person that is holding a, a battery that is going off, that is going down from one moment to the next, to have stronger battery and power toward the end. It's a joke. You, uh, the Creator wouldn't do that. So it means that our salvation is right under our nose. If you recognize in yourself how weak you are, how devastated you are, how broken you are, how shaky you are, how sad you are, how traumatized you are, so you need to understand that your salvation is under your nose. Because else you are saying such horrible things in your thoughts, in your mind, on the Creator, and you don't realize how great and amazing He is. Because their complete redemption will take place in a moment. Suddenly it will be behind us. It already happened. Suddenly we will stand in a different world, in a redeemed world, in a world with no darkness, with no pain, with no sorrow with no more sadness, with no more depression, with no more fears, no more pressures, no more angers, no more cruelty, no more vicious thoughts, no more death, no more weaknesses, no more illnesses, no more plagues, no more murders, no more violence, no more cursings, nothing. 
Nothing from that foreign dark side of the world from the generations of exile will take place in the future to come in the days of prosperity and, 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 and complete salvation. And when it will happen, and it's about to happen, we will all understand that He was always there. That the Savior was walking with us in the valley of death, like King David could recognize Him. And to say, even when I'm walking in the valley of death, I don't see anything bad because I know you're with me. Even if I'm reaching to rock bottom of hell, to the sheets of hell, I'm not scared. I know that you're there with me. Here you are with me. Why? Because he had those eyes. Because to the righteous ones, the Creator will give his eyes to recognize the Or Aganuz La Tzadikim, the hidden light that is hidden and treasured for those righteous ones to enjoy from, to see the light of the Creator in the darkness, to recognize His godliness and His greatness even in the darkest hours of them all. And that's a blessing and a gift that people are receiving when they're reaching a certain level. What's that level of righteousness, of being holy, of being connected? I'll tell you, it's very simple. You need to love Hashem with all your heart. Ve'ahavta et Hashem elokecha bechol levavcha uvechol nafshecha uvechol meodecha. And that's it. You should love. You should go with your heart and love. And love Hashem in all the ways that He's dressing Himself. When He's dressing Himself in your family, you should love your family. When He's dressing Himself in your job, in your work, you need to love your work. When He's dressing Himself for you in your learning, you need to love that learning. And even in times of crisis, of pain, of difficulties, you should look for the love. You should ask for faith, to look for the faith in the Creator even in the hardest hours, even in hours of despair, even in hours of sadness, in hours that you don't have no advice, that fears are attacking you from four wings of the universe, and you don't know what to do. You don't have no advice. You don't have no one to call. You don't have no one to help you. You are sitting and shaking and scared in the middle of your darkness, the darkest hour of your life. In that moment, what can you do? You should ask that question. Where is his place that I'll admire him? I want to admire him. The angels are saying that. Where is that place? Where is his place? I'm looking for him. They cannot find him. Even the angels, they cannot find him. You know why they cannot find him? Because they are in the day. Because they are in the light. And in the light you cannot see the light because everything is shining around you. But when you're in the darkness, even the tiniest match will be a salvation for you. A tiniest candle will illuminate the darkness. You will recognize a, a, a candle in the darkest night in the desert from miles away. Why? Because of the darkness. The darkness is the gift for you to find the roots of your soul. Because your soul is shining from within and the complete world around you is dark. No matter where you look at, everything is dark. The bookcases with those amazing old books, it's dark. The rabbis with the longest beards are dark. The Sefer Torah Shebaichal, it's dark. You can't see the light. Open it. It's not a disgrace. Open. What can you see? Oh, a Sefer Torah. And you're taking it out of the Echal. And you're opening. Guys, do you understand what the person that is reading the Torah in Shabbat morning is reading, is telling you? Or that it's all blocked and sealed for you and you don't have a clue what the Torah is talking about? And I'm not making fun because you're English speakers. I'm telling you that an Israeli person, the one that stands and reads in the Torah himself, and he understands the meaning of the word, he doesn't understand one thing about the Torah. The Torah for him is blocked and sealed and locked, and he doesn't know anything about it. 
The proof for that is simple. Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, that huge giant righteous man, he took the first word in the Bible, Bereshit, and he wrote 70 long articles, explanations on the word Bereshit. And on that book, that is explaining the meaning, only 70 interpretations, explanations on the word Bereshit, you can write thousands and millions of books of explanations of what that he meant and what that he aimed and what that he wrote and what you understand from it. And there is much more to it than those millions of books that we're going to write on the word Bereshit. Because Bereshit contains infinity inside of it. The Torah is wider than the sea. Even if you're going to investigate the whole ocean and you're going to know, even though that we know, that we don't know even 5% of what the ocean contains. You don't have a clue what goes on in the ocean. You don't understand the system at all. And you're talking about something simple about the sea. It's a physical huge amount of water in a, in a, in a huge bucket underground, in the ground, standing, water, go look, go search, submarines, scuba divers, boats, whatever you want, which devices, you don't know anything. You can't investigate one tiniest animal. You cannot reach the amount of knowledge and information that it contains. You don't know one particle to dissect and to understand what it builds out of. You don't know anything about this world. And the Torah is wider than the sea. Rechava mineyam. You can never understand. It will always stay dark for you when when you're trying to look at it from outside. But when you are not looking on the physical Torah, on the book, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the papers, on the letters, on the dark letters, when you're not looking in a physical eye on the world, you just block your eyes and you look deep inside. And you try to connect yourself to the will of Hashem, to the real intention of the Torah, then you will find an inner spring of knowledge. Then in that moment you will be connected to ancient archives of knowledge and suddenly your soul will bring out so much knowledge like the Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai was able to write the Tikkun Azor on, on, on the word Bereshit. Lines on lines, chapters on chapters, pages on pages, and it was nothing compared to all the knowledge and information that he held in his head, in his heart, in his mind. Because his heart was connected in an inner channel to the ancient archives, to the Creator Himself. And in that place there is no end to knowledge. There is no end to pleasure, to satisfaction, to joy, to glory, to happiness, to grace, to all the wonders. But you cannot find that unless you are seeking for it. Unless you're choosing to divide yourself from the external world, from the show that goes on outside, people with honor, with money, with jobs, with roles, with with opinions, with thoughts, with knowledge, all kinds of types of people that are just making fun of themselves while showing themselves as someone. Oh, I'm rich. Oh, I'm knowledgeable. Oh, I'm talented. I'm an actor. I'm a billionaire. I'm Dr. Jeff. I don't know what. Those are all jokes. You're humiliating yourself by trying to present yourself as someone that you are not. Because you are now just presenting your suit. Oh, I am a tzitzit. Oh, I am a white shirt. Oh, I learned seven years in college. Oh, I was finishing high school. Oh, I was in the army. That's not you. Those are only the way, that's only the way that you are dressed and covered as a result of the exile of the physical world that you are trapped in. Who you are is who your soul is. And who your soul is? Your soul is divine. 
Your soul is godly. Your soul is portion of heaven. That's who your soul is. And people are disconnected from that. People are scared to admit that they are holy. And those ones that are trying to admit in that, very fast their mind is flipping and tripping and they become the potential Mashiach and walking with their staff in JFK and start making videos of them being arrested in, 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 by the police over them. Crazy sick, poor people. Okay, many sick people. I met Elijah the prophet, Jeremiah the prophet. Okay, I heard all those craziness. If you met Elijah the prophet, you won't go and start telling everyone. You will be like so like in shock. You won't be able to talk for weeks. <laughs> you, you'll bang your head to the wall to the tshuva. You can scream to heaven to save you from your filth. I met Elijah the prophet. You see those crazy poor guys on Facebook. Poor guys. They're crashing. The way to be balanced is to understand that the Creator is with you. With you means right here. I'm asking you, what's the highest thing in Avodat Hashem? You want to serve Hashem. You want to commit yourself to Avodat Hashem. It's to be with Hashem, right? King David said, and it's been described as the highest level of them all. To see the pleasant of Hashem and to visit in His place, in His palace. Where is his palace? Is there a place to go? No. But the righteous ones in the book that called Sefer Heichalot on the palaces of Hashem are describing those righteous ones standing and meditating and climbing walls, worlds after worlds and seeing and answering questions and getting into holy gates and fighting and ignoring huge amounts of darkness and, 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 and horses of thunders and storms and, and black clouds that are thundering them and destroying them and hitting them and they're holding on and mentioning holy names in their meditation in their way of observe, inner observation into the divine worlds that installed inside your brain it's all in here it's all in here it's not over there go to jerusalem i can take you to places in jerusalem that, that, that in Amsterdam you won't find filthy places like those. I can take you. I've been to those places. I can take you to hard and dark hours in the holy area of Jerusalem, in the old city, that you will scream to go back to New York. That you will beg to go back to live in Pennsylvania. You won't be able to deal with the darkness that goes on in the land of Israel. Oh no, Israel. Oh no, Jerusalem. Listen, you still don't know what you're talking about. When you think that it's a physical location, when you think that it's a physical place, if you think that spirituality can be measured with meters or miles, it's a joke. You don't understand what you're talking about. What that Moses seen from Mount Nevo was not the physical land. I've been on Mount Nevo. When I was young after the army, I went to a trip in Jordan. I was climbing Mount Nevo. Today there is a huge church over there on the peak of the mountain. You can see tiny amount of the land of Israel. You cannot see all of Israel from Mount Nevo. What do you want to say? The mountains moved. You cannot see from the peak of the highest mountain in the area inside of Israel. You cannot see the whole land. You can see only a few miles with your physical eyes. But Moses, he saw all Israel. Where? How he saw all Israel? In the eyes of his spirit. He was on Mount Nevo and he looked toward the direction of Israel. But what that he saw was a spiritual sight. He saw with his spiritual eyes, with the eyes of Hashem that had been given to the righteous ones. And Hashem la tzaddikim. And when he used Hashem's eyes, so in Hashem, the eyes of Hashem, they can go and wander in the wide land, in the whole world. Because for the Creator, the night is illuminated like the day. And He can show you things that are from a different world. 
and you can see visions and he can, can provide prophecies to you that you will stand and see things that are in the way from a world of beyond. Things that are not dressed in physical vessels. But that will be only the reward of those ones that will seek for the Creator from within. That they will look for an inner answer to their life questions. And not going to try to be answered by fake people, by wealthy people, by knowledgeable people, by people that compare to know something about life. You want to find the truth, you need to look for it inside of you. Means ask yourself on a daily basis, what in the world am I doing with my life? What is the purpose of my life? Why am I here? Why am I eating? What am I eating? Is it the right food for me? Doesn't mean go crazy, but be aware to who you are and always seek and look for more. To find who you are, what's the purpose of your being, what's the real nature of your creation, what are the real talents and gifts that are treasured inside of you, who you really are, not what you made of, not what you went through, who you are, who you were when you suffer, who you really were when you enjoyed, who you were and who you are, that's who you will be. In every moment of your life, you need to look for closeness to the Creator. Closeness to the Creator is closeness to the truth. When you're a liar, pretender, when you're a scammer, you are cut and divided from Hashem. You and Him are not in one place. He is in the light and you're in the dark. But when you recognize the fact that you're in the dark and you start asking, where are you? Where's the truth? You're in the light. Even if the darkest hour is going all over you and you feel physical despair, you feel physical panic attacks eating your mind, if you will stop that storm and you'll close your eyes and you start breathing, and meditating and thinking to yourself, I want the truth. I desire one truth. I want to come closer to holiness, to purity. I want to be a good person. Please help me, Hashem. Please help me, God. Please, I want to find myself. What am I doing in this world? And breathe and keep on looking and ask yourself, is that job is the right job for me? Is that soulmate is the right soulmate for me? Is that path is the right path for me? You'll find the answers within, not outside. Outside, go ask the rabbi, he will say yes. Go ask that rabbi, he'll say no. Go ask that ask ac expert, go ask that expert, both of them gonna contradict each other. And if both of them gonna give you the same advice, so that's for sure a good reason for you to go look elsewhere. No one knows what he's talking about because no one can calculate all the changes that can take place in your life. There's no methods, there are no ways. There is your root and that's it. There is your reality and the hand of private supervision on your life. There, is no pa there are no patterns, there are no systems. The Creator can change everything in a second. He made millions and He lost all of His property. Doing the same business in the same company, same job, same work, work, everything was the same. Not at all. Because they were walking on different lanes. And that went straight and that took a very strong turn to the left. Radical left. What can you do? If Hashem wants, you'll rise. If Hashem wants to educate you in a different way, you'll go in that way. And for a person that is seeking for the truth, there are no up and downs, because he's always seeking for the truth. His journey is a spiritual journey. It's not a physical journey. He doesn't suffer from the cold or enjoying the heat. He's not over there at all. He's finding a purpose in every moment and moment of his life. And that's the reward that is offered to those ones that are asking for faith. To live their life with Hashem. To live their life with the Creator. With the one that creates their life in the present, right now. 
Only when you look for faith, you look to believe that what that happens in your life is the actions of the Creator that is creating your life in real time. Only when you live your life like that, you live eternal life. And physicality cannot hit you, cannot break you, cannot cut you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.